Hey guys, my name is David and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the first book that I read for subscriber month 2022. And that was The Flowers of Evil by Shuju Ashimi. I was recommended this by Numeria and I didn't read the back of it. I didn't read the synopsis so I went into it completely blind. I did actually look online to see what genre it fell under or it fell in. And there wasn't really a specific genre that this slotted into. It did say that it was a coming of age story and after reading it I suppose you can say that yeah it is a coming of age story but it's more a suspense story than anything else. So before I get started on my video I just want to talk about Numeria who recommended me this read. First off I just want to say thank you this was extremely enjoyable and fun to read and quite unexpected as well. But Numeria as a channel is quite unconventional. As I said before, she's not a really bubbly, over-the-top booktuber. She is down-to-earth. I really enjoy her content. And I will have her channel linked down below. So if you want to watch a channel that's not the same as all the other channels online, I would recommend her. So this isn't the first manga that I've read by Shimi. I have actually read the Blood on the Tracks Volume 1, which is extremely shorter than The Flowers of Evil. Not sure what I made of this. It was fine and entertaining for what it was, but I needed a bit more. So before I get into this video, this is going to be my own thoughts and feelings, and this is going to be a spoiler-free video as well. I also want to say that because the names in this book are Japanese, apologies if I mispronounce them, but I will do my best. I can barely speak English, so Japanese is completely out of the window. So this follows the main character called Kazuga, who is a young boy who is in a school, and just try to find a picture. There's a picture of him right, right, right there. And he is just an average everyday guy. He's very shy. He's really introverted. He doesn't, he has friends, but he doesn't explore outside of his small friendship group. He is really, really interested in reading. More specifically, he carries a book around with, it, with him called The Flowers of Evil by Charles Baudelaire which I had to look up online and I was surprised that it was a real book because I thought that it was a book that, yeah, Ashimi made up. But no, it was a actual poetry book by a French author. And for completion, while I was reading this, I decided to listen to it on audio. I will have the audio book of the poetry collection down below in case you want to check it out. But I just want to make it crystal clear, guys, that this isn't an adaptation of that poetry collection. It's its own separate thing with the same title. But Kazuga is obsessed with this book. He regards himself as being superior amongst other people and his fellow students because he is carrying around his book with him and is claiming to have read it and he idolizes this book and it's a big part of the story although it's not a main part of the story it's a big part of his character now Kazuga has a obsession with a fellow student called Saeki who he idolizes he worships in his mind Saeki is the perfect girl he worships her, he considers her a goddess, an angel, and the superior female of the human race. And she even inspires Kazuga in his day-to-day -day life to becoming better. And he is really shy when he's around Saiki. He looks at her when they're in class and whenever they have a interaction with each other, he's really shy and he doesn't know how to interact with her because as I said he is an introvert so he hasn't really had that communication 
from people outside of his small friendship group. So this is a picture of Sa Saiki and she is portrayed as being a very, very sweet and innocent Japanese girl who is very shy herself. She isn't outgoing. She is popular within her class, but like Kazuga, she is really in her own world. So one day after school, Kazuga is the last one to leave for the day. And as he is preparing to go home, he finds a bag on the floor. And when he goes up to it and has a look and, in, and inspects it, and when he looks inside, he sees Saiki's school gym uniform. And at first, he doesn't know what to make of this. He knows that it's Saiki's uniform because it has her name written on the top of the, on the front of the shirt, rather. And he doesn't know what to do about this. He doesn't know whether to leave it there. But in the end, he decides to take it home with him and then return it to Saiki when he sees her again. That's the plan that he has. But when he gets home with the uniform, because it belongs to the girl that he is absolutely obsessed and in love with. Not in a real creepy way, I wonder if make that crystal clear here guys. He isn't a stalker, he's just a young guy that is experiencing girls and noticing how attractive girls are for the first time. Not saying, oh, girls are disgusting, oh, stay, stay, stay away from me. No, he's experiencing feelings not really sexually, but attraction towards the opposite sex for the very first time. And because Sasuke is the object of his affection, and he has a part of her, which is her uniform, he lays it out on the bed in a real, in a real respective way, and he looks on it, and he... I won't say he idolizes it, but he admires it. He doesn't do anything creepy with it, but he keeps it as kind of a memento for his affection. And when Kazuga is with his small group of friends and when he's in the classroom together, his friends kind of poke fun at him saying, oh, well, you like Sayeki and he doesn't know how to react to this. He says, oh, no, I'm not interested in Saiki. No, don't worry, I don't have any interest in her. But at the same time, he stands up for her when his fellow classmates and friends kind of have like a jab at her. So Kazuga thinks that he has gotten away with this and no one has found out about this. But Nazuka, a fellow students within his class confronts him and says right I know what you did and Nazuka is the backbone of this whole story I hope I'm pronouncing her name right but that is a picture of her and she's also on the cover of the book and also on the reverse side as well sorry guys I got her name wrong it's Nakamoto sorry I, I did say that I was going to do my best but Nakamoto is a oddball. She is an outcast within the community and within her classroom. Everyone knows that she is unusual and says and acts different. But Nakamoto confronts Kazuga about that she knows that he took the uniform because she was there, she saw it. It's really hard to describe her as a character. She tells Kazuga that he is a pervert and she holds the concept of him taking this uniform above his head and says that he is disgusting. She calls him names like shitbug and demeans him as a human being and as a fellow student. Nakamoto is what I call a psychopath. She enjoys holding this above his head. Now when I was reading this, I was thinking, why is she doing this? Why is she standing up for Saiki? Because she doesn't have any friends. They're definitely not friends with each other. And then I was thinking, 
was she sexually abused or something happened within her past that has made her do this, that she's standing up for female rights and female empowerment. But at the same time, I know that there is a lot more to that. And she enjoys holding this threat above Kazuga's head. And she even gets a kind of a sexual thrill out of it. Well, that's what I got from her character. She enjoys basking in the chaos that she has created and dancing amongst the rubble. So Nakamoto enjoys tormenting Kazuga and holding this above him, as I said, and she even tells him to do certain things with the overarching threat of her eventually telling people. One of these things is that she makes Kazuga wear Saiki's school uniform, or her gym uniform rather, underneath his regular clothes. So he wears the uniform and then his regular clothes. And then she tells him to go on a date with Saiki because Kazuga and Saiki are getting closer with each other. And they even go on a date at one point. And this is to a local bookshop, which is a favourite of Kazuga's. And he even gives her a copy, or buys her a new copy rather, of The Flowers of Evil. And says, look, this is my favourite book. This is my gift to you. But in the background, Nazuka is watching what's happening. She is enjoying watching this. But she's also the anchor to Kazuga. And she reminds him, look, look, I've got this over your head. And you'll do Everything I tell you to do, she has that power over him. But she's also demeaning him all the time and calling him names and calling him a pervert. And says, you are disgusting. You are sniffing this uniform. You are rubbing it up against yourself. And this isn't something that he doesn't actually do. But she demeans him. In her eyes, she wants to peel back all of his layers of his skin and expose him for what he is to himself and to Saiki and to the whole town and the whole community and throughout this book it's just a massive roller coaster ride and a emotional roller coaster of all these different emotions that I was encountering while I, while I was going through this I've read numerous things I read what about 50 books so far this book made me feel so many different emotions in any one of them 50 books ever did or could before i forget i just want to show you some of the artwork as well the artwork is really really good and real beautiful to look at there is all these author notes as well by um, the um, author which he expresses that everything in this book and some of the characters were inspired by events and people in his real life when he was growing up. And because this book explores Kazuga experiencing being sexually attracted to a member of the opposite sex, it does explore sexual things and sexual feelings. There is um, parts of the book where it focuses on the uh, crotch area of Saiki or the um, or a chest and there's also a point where Nazuka takes off all or she rips off all of Kazuga's clothes to expose him completely butt ass naked but all of his bits and pieces his crown jewels are all censored Austin Power style there is never a explicit sexual content. It never shows any breasts or any thing like that. And that just shows a picture of Kazuga begging that Nazuka to um, forgive him and to leave him alone. Because that's what he wants her to do. He wants her to leave him alone. And he tells her, look, I am not who you say I am. I'm not, I'm not what you think I am. I am. I did a horrible mistake, and I am sorry. 
I love Saiki with all my heart. I worship her. And just please, please just leave me alone. And she will never leave him alone until she has completed what she has done and set out to do. And that is to convince Kazuga that he is a perversion of nature and he is beneath her. And Nakamata and Kazuga are on the same playing field. It is explored that Kazuga may have sexual feelings towards Nakamoto when he looks on her and looks at her body in a kind of a sexual way, especially at the end of the book when it rains and her shirt is all soaked with water and he can see her bra through her shirt. And there is times in the book where you think that she has a interest in him when she like presses him up against the wall or gets on top of him and yells at him. You think that she's doing this because she's jealous of Saiki. And this is even brought up in the book that he thinks that she's only doing this because she's jealous, which she denies. At one point I was thinking, why is she doing this? And I was thinking, does she have a crush on Saiki? It's just a massive roller coaster ride of a book and unexpected. I wasn't in I wasn't in it at all anticipating to enjoy this book as much as I did. I did find this cheap on eBay. I did pay a bit for it and I was thinking, okay, it's a bit more than I wanted to pay, but because it was recommended to me, I was thinking, okay, I'll I'll get it and maybe I can sell it on and get some of the money back but I wasn't at all anticipating on keeping this after I was done with it. There is three more other volumes of this as well. Also this is the complete volume one or the complete first book which is the which contains the first three volumes I think. But I think I will definitely be continuing on with the I wouldn't say series but with the manga story and to ultimately see where it goes. It was interesting, I must say that. I I mean, Kuroshi isn't the bad guy. He isn't a pervert. He is just a ordinary guy experiencing, noticing girls and, and being attracted towards girls for the very first time. And because it's new to him, he doesn't know how to react to it. And also because he's an introvert, he doesn't know how to communicate with people outside of the people that he usually talks to or interacts with. But yeah, I think I've said all I've needed to say. Once again, apologies if I've been saying characters' names slightly wrong. I know for a fact I have slipped up from time to time, so apologies for that. But yeah, let me know if you have heard of this book. Let me know if you are interested in reading it. This is outside of what I usually gravitate towards, which is... Jinjuritsu. This isn't horror, but if you are interested in anything I've just said, then yeah, I would definitely recommend this. This was probably one of the biggest surprises of 2022. So thank you once again, Numeria, for recommending me The Flowers of Evil. And yeah, it was a roller coaster ride, as I said, to read this. So guys, that's all I had to say. So with all that out of the way, all said and done, I will see you in my next video. Bye.